Hi, how you doing? We're here at Manatee today, down in Central Florida, at the train meet at uh, Manatee Central. Is that right? Right. Yeah, okay. And uh, my friend here, Earl Muller. He told me to shut up. Earl Muller, Muller is going to show us how to do soft soldering to various different types of metal. And he does a beautiful job. And it's a great process. You like to try it. Uh, here's the video on how to do it. So I hope you enjoy it. My name is Daryl Muller, and I'm going to do this soft soldering demonstration for some people that don't understand how to do this without using a torch and not distorting your work when doing it. It's very, very easy to do, and if you use a torch, you're going to find that you distort the metal because the torch is going out all over and it's distorting the metal. What I'm using is, first thing I'm using is solder that I use, the flux I'm using is Stay Clean Flux. It's pork, it's very clear. No flux is on it after you're done with it. All you gotta do is wash it off with water and it's all taken care of. Um, if you it's on your hands, it doesn't burn your hands unless you put it in your eyes. You can leave it on your hands all day long and it won't bother anything. It's very, very mild acid. The solder that we use is 50-50 solder, but not the, no lead solder. It's got to be the lead solder, which is this. Now, that solder, when you're working on a diesel or something like that, only needs to have soft solder, which melts at 325 to 335 degrees. If you're working on a steam engine, you're very, very close to the boiler, which is normally about 350 degrees, that will not work because it'll melt. In that case, you need to buy something that's called Stabrite. Stabrite is very expensive. That roll there is about $80 if you go buy it. Uh, this melts at about 450 degrees, so you can actually solder this very, very close to the boil without melting the, the solder, which is done on my engine. Anyway, so we're going to just work with the 50-50 and show you how we do it. The acid flux that's in here is, like I said, is clear. And all you got to do is clean this stuff up a little bit and we put it on there. Now what happens is we're using a soldering iron that's a very heavy-duty soldering iron, which I don't think is, is, it can buy anymore. It's a 240-325 watt dual power one. If you don't use something this heavy, you're not going to be able to do it, especially on thicker metals, because you're not going to be able to transfer enough heat. When you solder with this here, you're going to find that instead of starting with torch, which is going to go all over the place, the solder wants to go to the tip. So you're drawing the solder to the tip, so you're not making it run all over the place. It's going directly to the tip. So you're only sawing the part you do. You're not doing no distortion of the metal. So when you see this done, you can see where I just taxed some of this here. And now we're just going to go over and show you how it works out to where we can actually run a thing. And then you can go over it and you can smooth it out. And also, usually, when you do this, on the back side of it, there's usually no solder on the back side. If it is, it's just a little bit because it's still going back up into the, 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 the point tip there. So it's not trying to run down the other side, unless, unless, you, um, uh, unless you do it vertically. Then sometimes vertically it'll run down on you because you can't help it. Uh, if you're careful, you can do it. I, I do it, but some people at first may not be able to do it. It's a little bit tricky to do vertical. But horizontal, and I do vertical, but it just takes a little practice to wind up doing it. So what we're doing, we're putting a little acid flux on this here, and we're going to do this first piece. This first piece was sorting galvanize to galvanize. People think that's a no-no, but it's not a no-no. I've done it for years. On well, my job, I did it all the time. And then after that, we're going to solder the galvanize to stainless steel. Then after you do that, we're going to solder the stainless steel to brass. Same flux, same solder, no change, no distortion. So I'm going to put a little flux on here and see what we can do about going on here. I really need to be able to see a little better so I'm going to have to move home. You can put the solder sometimes in front and sometimes in back. It depends on the situation. Now, there it is, right? Now, if you want to smooth it out a little bit better, 
spans were already started on there anyway. It ain't going to melt the whole thing. You just go back and you go over it one time. Now, do you want anything any better than that? All right, so now we're going to do stainless steel to galvanize. Same difference. If I can find my solder. Oh, here we are. So you preheat it a little bit. And you just follow it right in front of it. Well, you just start soldering. And just keep the solder falling right in front of it. You go a little slow, you watch the heat. Make sure your heat's going all right. And you go right along there. And there you are. Now, here I want, okay, I made a couple of mistakes here, so I just go back over it again. Now, I don't know who else would do better than that. That's amazing. This is so simple, because anywhere that you would want to do this, it makes it so simple to start of stuff that you normally would put a flange on and put a bolt in the back to try to bolt it down. And it works just absolutely perfect. And also, we, if you have a car and you have a fender of a car and you got a hole in the side of the fender, if you try to put lead in that, it runs right down out. So what you do is you clean that piece out, you clean it out really good, you put this thing called OSPO, which you can buy at, at a Home Depot. It's a little bit light green stuff, and you put, keep putting that on it until you get all the rust out of the pores. Then you put a piece of little sheet metal in the back of it with a screw, and you can solder on this thing vertically without it running down the damn thing. Mm -hmm. And then after, when you get it all spilled on up, you clean it off. When I do something like that, I use a little baking soda to make sure it's all clean. If you're working on a roof by a headliner, guess what? You don't have to take the headliner out because you're not getting the headliner out at all. All you're doing is this. So now we're going to do stainless steel to brass. Get that pair of pliers? Oh, I need flux. And it don't take much flux. And you can see there's no, there's no, uh, there's no problem here with any flux at all. You don't have to clean all your flux off and everything else. So it's, it, to me, we've used this for years. My engine is all done with this here, with all the joints that are done on, uh, with the, with the stay bright because of the thing. But you need a hot solder name. I'm shaking like a leaf here. So you can put it in back too if you want. You might go back and you might clean it up. There you go. Amazing. And let me tell you, as far as strong, the little bit that was on the end here, you can't break it off. You cannot break it off. So it's to catch me out. So hope you guys enjoyed this little demonstration and learned something from it because there is a lot to learn there. You either do this this way or you don't do it this way. You do it whatever way you want to do it. This is just another way to do it without using a torch and no distortion. You don't see no distortion on anything there. Nothing. Soft solder now, regular 50-50 solder is hard to find. You may have to go to a plumbing supply and also for this here. Because you may find this in a, in a Home Depot, but you may not find that. And you're definitely not going to find it. You have to go either to a plumbing supply, and they're going to charge you a lot, or you need to go in an air-conditioned refrigeration place to be like that. So, and the soldering iron has got to be, if it's not a heavy-duty one, you're not going to do it. I did a lot more heavier stuff that, than that with this torch, with this uh, soldering iron. This may not be able to be bought anymore, but you can find them online every once in a while. If you look online, you can find these things. And people, some people sell them really cheap. I've had about 10 of them. I sold them to some of my friends. Or about. Very, very, they make a lot of small ones, but the big one is what you need. It's called the D550. That's your dual heat, I think. Yeah, dual heat. Two, uh, two, 
243.25. And you can do it with a smaller one, but you're going to have time trying to get it here. But there again, when you look at the back side of this, you see nothing on the back side of this. Where am I looking at? Just barely come through there. And this thing you can't break apart if you put it in a vise. You just can't break it apart. So this is, this is on there forever. See, even in the back, you can't see hardly nothing sort of coming through because it's all drawn back to the tip. It's not the other way around. A torch is going to send it all over the place. It's going to have solder all over the joint. Okay, well, thanks a lot for watching our videos. Thank you very much for uh, watching my videos. Please subscribe to my videos, and we'll see you again on the next video. Okay, uh, we're here at Manatee today, and um, we're down here in uh, Central Florida. Sh shut up. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with you? What's the matter? Oh, I don't know. You didn't tell me you're doing it. What Why is, you what is wrong with you? What, have you been drinking again? I'll try it again. Take two. <laughs>